Welcome everyone to the Blacks in Technology Bit Tech Talk podcast, a show where we talk to black people who are engineers, innovators, educators, inventors, change makers, and entrepreneurs doing amazing things in the world of technology. The Bit Tech Talk podcast is where they show how they are stomping the divide by sharing their stories, experiences, ideas, knowledge, and perspective on tech with the Bit community. Welcome everyone to the Blacks in Technology podcast, aka Bit Tech Talk podcast. Uh, This is our first podcast we've done in a while, and this is one of the first podcasts we've done as far as video, at least for Bit Tech Talk. Uh, And I'm excited about this because not only is it one of our first video podcasts, but it's our first featuring one of our chapter leaders. So I'm excited about that, excited to uh, really get into this series, spotlighting our chapter leaders and a Bit Foundation and what they're doing locally uh, to help stomp the divide. So with that, that being said, you know, my name is Greg Grinley. I'm the host of the uh, Big Tech Talk podcast. I'm also the founder of the Blacks and Technology Organization. And I want to introduce our guest tonight, uh, Bobby McNeil. Bobby, welcome to the show. Thank you, Greg. Happy to be here, man. Excited to do this. Yeah. So Bobby is uh, he's a tech recruiting leader. Uh, he is uh, also a former college athlete, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. You actually won a college championship, which is pretty cool. I think you may be the first person I've met that's, that's won on that, <laughs> on that level, so that's pretty cool. We'll talk about that. He's also the, uh, the president of uh, the Blacks and Technology Raleigh-Durham chapter. Uh, and we'll get it, uh, into a little bit about that as well. But starting off, Bobby, tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you're from, your education, that type of thing. Yeah. So um, I'm originally from Fuqua, Verena, North Carolina. So it's in uh, rural North Carolina. It's about maybe 30 minutes south of Raleigh, uh, but still in okay. the, you know, the 919 area. So uh, born and raised there, um, you know, grew up there. Um, I have an older sister. Um, both of my parents are, are still down there, actually. So and, um, you know, that's, that's where I'm from. So I grew up in this area. Um, again, it's just south of Raleigh, uh, the Raleigh-Durham area. So I've seen it develop, um, you know, my whole life. You know, I know the Raleigh-Durham area, you know, we have a lot of people who are, you know, transient, right? They, they move here. Right. But I've been here all my life. You know, I've seen the, the tech scene really thrive and grow uh, throughout my life. And, uh, you know, it was a, actually an all-star um, basketball player um, here in the state of North Carolina. Um, you know, pretty well-known oh, prep star in my awesome. day. Yeah. And then, um, okay. you know, basically, you know, went to college, uh, got a full athletic um, scholarship, also got a full academic ride, too. So a lot of people don't don't know that because they just focus on the, the athletic piece. Yeah, yeah. And I went. I'm glad yeah, you said yeah. that, so, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So I was I not only w- could I hoop, but I could also write a, a really good term paper. So uh, I was really good at that. <laughs> you're so prob- I got my you're probably pretty B's. popular on the basketball team. man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I was uh I hey, was, I, uh, hey, Bobby, you know, I got this term paper coming up, man. Can you help me out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. You know, I see you at the practice. But uh, but yeah, man, did that. Uh, went to college and uh, went, went to Barton College, which is also here in North Carolina. Um, small school. Okay. Um, you know, small small school in eastern North Carolina. Um, Division II. Um, so, you know, I played Division II athletics there. Played college basketball all four years. And uh, won an NCAA national championship my senior year. Um, you know, really excited about nice. that. You, if you can see the screen, you probably see my, my jersey right there. Yeah, uh, yeah, I see it in jersey. the back. Yeah, my high school okay. jersey is right here. It's on another side. And, you know, I was a four-year letterman there um, at Fugue Arena High School and um, won a national championship my senior year. That was a, a heck of a way to go out. And then I started my yeah. career in uh, tech recruiting. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I knew I was going to do something like in business, corporate America, you know, things like yeah. that. So I started my career in tech recruiting. I've been doing it for over 15 years. I worked at some notable um, companies, um, you know, tech staffing agencies, but also tech companies. Uh, most recently, uh, Amazon Web Services and uh, worked my way up the ranks, uh, you know, really got you know well versed in how to find diverse talent, but also how to um, source for, uh, you know, you know, different types of skill sets, right, from software engineering, uh, cybersecurity, data analyst. Um, did a number of different, you know, things that I've recruited in tech. I, I've recruited it all. Uh, got successful, was able to run different, you know, recruiting teams across the uh, the country and across the world. And, uh, you know, you know, mentored recruiters, coach recruiters on best practices, did, you know, DE&I initiatives, worked with HBCUs. And, you know, then, you know, found, uh, you know, Blacks in Technology and uh, beca- started off yeah. actually as the vice president of communications. I joined back in 2022. 
Uh, so started okay. off as a VP of communications in six months, I was voted to be the chapter president and, um, the rest is history. So, and I'm, I'm not only, I'm doing that. I'm also the, um, the national chair for career development and tech recruiting and, and doing a whole bunch of different things here in the Raleigh Durham area. And also here nationally, um, you know, a whole yeah. bunch of stuff that I'm pretty sure we'll touch into, but that's my intro. Excellent. I, I appreciate that. And, and, uh, you know what's cool about this this uh this podcast and and what we're doing is Dennis gets to talk to a lot of you a lot of times and I yeah. don't like I, I know you all but I don't get to talk to you and really get to know you uh as intimately as, as Dennis so this is real cool and getting to know like your background uh you know as well as how you got into becoming the chapter president and things like that and and what types of things you all are doing. BIT is always focused on forming new partnerships and opportunities to assist the community and our members with their continued professional growth and development. If you'd like to partner with us, send an email, inquiries at blacksintechnology.net. Let's take this back just a little bit. Uh, Cause you, you know, to your uh, your tech recruiting, T- tell us like, you know, you 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 go to college. You are obviously an, uh, 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 an all star player uh, in in your in your state. So then you you go to college and you start playing ball there. How did that? How did that whole thing come about as far as transitioning into tech recruiting? Yeah, you know, um, I'm I'm one of the the many many people that. Um, that we don't talk about that goes pro in something else, right? Uh, so you know, I was, yeah, you know, I was a, I was a star athlete in high school. You know, I was, you know, I was the man on the team. You know, in college, I was yeah. more of a role player. But um, you know, making that transition, you know, I say from the ball game to the tech game uh, was a very like unique experience, right? So I had to really um, early on really figure out, you know, what I wanted to do. And, you know, you don't go to right. college to, to be a tech recruiter. There's no tech recruiting major, right? There's HR majors, but there's no tech recruiting major. So, right. you know, when I when I got in, you know, I really, you know, was really trying to find something where I could work with people, um, but also, at, you know, work with people in more of a corporate setting and, you know, really impact people's lives. And I kind of really right. stumbled on, you know, into recruiting in general, which is how most people find that profession. And, uh, you know, I was, you know, I started, you know, really at the at the bottom of the totem pole. I was a recruiting admin assistant. I was just basically managing the job boards and and, um, you know, mm. working through some of the different, you know, screening documents and things like that, you know, years right. ago. And, you know, I was on the phones. Well, before I got on the phones, I was, you know, sitting, you know, in the what they call the the pit area. Right. And I was just listening to all these recruiters. They were talking to these like hi, like highly skilled, sophisticated tech people. They were talking about penetration testing and cybersecurity offense versus defense and back end coding. <laughs> right. I'm like, who are they talking to, right? And they just seemed <laughs> to really like you know really enjoy it. And um, I was like, okay, I want to try my hand in that. And um, you know, I've always been highly competitive and ambitious and things like that. So I really wanted to get in the game and really learn how to do that. And what got me into it is that what I realized early on in my career that there really wasn't a lot of us, you know, in the tech sector, right. Right. Um, In that space. So I kind of looked at myself as a, you know, a young black man, somebody who, you know, kind of has some, some, some skills and some knowledge, like how can I really, you know, I'm always going to make the, try to make the best hire possible, no matter what somebody's, you know, nationality or race is, but how can I make a difference, you know, and how can I learn more so I can, you know, kind of make this impact and, and I really started, you know, listening to like dozens and dozens of phone screens and kind of like really picking up on these different things. And that's why I learned a little right. bit about software engineering, just listening to um, my fellow recruiters and managers, getting on phone screens and just kind of shadowing and just listen to right. those repetitiously. And I learned the difference between, you know, front end versus back end versus full stack software development. You know, I right. learned about all these different things so I could talk about it conversationally. And I just thought technology was just incredible. Um, it's the the ultimate equalizer. It balances everything out in our in our culture. 
And it, you know, it definitely, you know, it, you know, stomps the divide, right? You know, you think about, you know, technology and all the things that it can do from people in the mm-hmm. inner city to people in rural areas, right? It's the, it's the ultimate equalizer. So, you know, I'm not a technologist myself. I can't code, but I can talk to the people that code and I can talk to the people who want people that can code. So I looked at myself right. as the bridge. And um, that's really how I got into it. And that's why I'm passionate about it. And, I, and I'm glad that you, uh, you emphasized about, you know, picking the right person, uh, despite race or na- nationality, because I think that's important because right now you have this narrative uh, that a lot of people are pushing that diversity, equity and inclusion somehow equals lowering the bar. And that's far from the truth. Right. Like as a tech recruiter, I'm glad that you can speak to that and say it's not about that. It's it's just it's finding uh, um, viable candidates, candidates that have the experience and have the skills, but also seeking out candidates that in, in places that you uh, you may not seek them out at. Right. Uh, and bringing yeah. them in and giving them an opportunity. Uh, so I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that, man, because I think that's important. Yeah. And if I can, you know, just add one thing, like, you're right. You know, I, I hear yeah, that definitely. a lot. And it's it's not about like diversity in, in tech recruiting or diversity in tech teams. It doesn't lower the bar, it raises the bar. Because the more diverse your teams are when it comes to innovation and design, the more global your product is and the more it touches more people. You want to have a different perspective in the design review meeting. You want to have a different perspective in the lab, right? Um, when you're yeah. when you're making these products because they touch everything like Microsoft wanted to put a computer in every home, you know, Apple, you know, yeah. now, I don't know if you're an Apple person or Android person, but let's just use Apple. For example, they wanted to put a phone in every hand. You don't you don't do that if you don't think about the totality of innovation and diversity and how it impacts everybody. So it doesn't it doesn't lower the bar at all. It raises the bar. It makes it makes teams more productive. It makes teams more innovative and it makes teams more you know, globally aware when you have different perspectives in the room, no matter what mm-hmm. their race, gender, nationality is. So it raises the bar. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, again, like this is this narrative that's being spun in um, in the media nowadays is is really disheartening, right? Like it's mm-hmm. because I know from being an engineer and also um you know, being the founder of an, an entire community of, of black people that are in tech, uh, I get to experience all these different, you know, personalities, all these different uh, skill levels and experiences and things like that. And I know for sure, like the people that I talk to, the people that's part of the big community are top notch. It's, mm-hmm. it's, you're not, you're not going downhill because you choose to uh, hire a person, uh, a black person. And, and that's not the case. And this narrative that's being spun, I, I, f- frankly, is 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 dangerous to me. Um, yeah. And 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 you can and I can see it like how it's kind of permeating throughout even the, the nonprofit organizations, like funding mm-hmm. wise, like companies are pulling back funding because they don't want to be seen as supporting D and I initiatives and things. I, I honestly like to say, for bit, I think the product that we. Uh, and and product as far as you know community and services is that 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 we can um kind of offer to to uh, potential employers and things like that I, I honestly think um that for us it's not about the product that we offer is definitely in that realm of diversity equity inclusion right mm-hmm. because we're 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 black people in tech right. but that's not our objective Right. Like, I don't know if people understand that when they get like, well, our, my objective is not to solve diversity, equity and inclusion. Like you. So you you, you have different uh, departments uh, at these different corporations and uh, government sectors that their job literally is to try to help solve this problem within their company or within their organization. And I, that's mm-hmm. not like my intent when when I found a blacks in technology. It wasn't that. It was I'm in tech. I want to talk to more black people that are in tech. I want to build this community of black people so that not only do we get to know each other, but we get to feed off each other as far as knowledge, support, that type of thing. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's about being economically sound, right? Like yes. being financially, you know, sound. 
in the long run. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's what I want to see. And if the byproduct of, of that is helping your company in some way, then that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah. But the primary mission of Blacks in Technology is to increase the representation and participation of Black people in tech, not because... You know, you know, I want to see more black people at Facebook. It's because I want to see more black people in tech going after that money so they could start creating generational wealth. And not only that, but being in those in those spots so they, they can help steer where tech is going. Absolutely. So absolutely. I think that's, and, yeah. that's important as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, so, it, you know, yeah, I agree. Go ahead. No, I was just saying I I wanted I one hundred percent agree. You know, it's you know, yeah. there's different pathways to that. Sometimes it's it's being a, a tech business owner, a tech entrepreneur, and we provide resources yeah. for you to do that. So sometimes, like you know, entering into tech is not necessarily getting hired at Google. If you do, that's fantastic, right? And you know, right. if we helped you do that, that's great. But sometimes it's putting the tools yeah. and resources in front of you and making sure you have access to the technology so you can maybe build something of your own or build the infrastructure through technology of a business and an entrepreneurship, right? right? So sometimes it's yeah. that. Sometimes it's just the the knowledge with all the, you know, the, the products and, and resources and, and boot camps and things that we provide. So uh, I 100% yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that as well, because uh, that's that's highly important too. The resources that, that BIT provides uh, and the opportunities as well is, is key in, in, in what we're doing, so. What's up, everyone? We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Blacks and Technology Big Tech Talk podcast. Do you or someone you know have a dope story that they want to share with our Bit audience? Blacks and Technology is seeking guests to be on our podcast. We're looking to highlight the journeys and experiences of Black women and men in the tech industry. So if you know of someone, send them our way. Shoot us an email to contact us at blacksandtechnology.net or Click on the link in the show notes and fill out our form. We're looking to hear from you. Let's get back to, you know, you being a, um, a college athlete. Because I have met you in person. I didn't notice how tall you were, but I wasn't going to be that person to say, hey, man, can you hoop? But now that I know that you hoop, speaking of hoop, like, so my, my youngest son, he plays he plays basketball. Sixth grade. He's, he's pretty slick, actually. And I, I, tra- yeah. I train them. Um, mm-hmm. I played basketball, but more, you know, um, rec, ball, rec ball for many years, many years. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I, I um, you know, I take them to the gym. I got all the equipment. I train them. I watch videos to, you know, figure out how to increase his skill set in one area and things like that. And he's, he's really good. Uh, but I was out mm-hmm. back the other day and I got an older <laughs> son. He's, he's, four, he's 14. And he's a swimmer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, and muscular, and he's got a swimmer's build, strong as I don't know what, man. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm showing my younger son a, uh, uh, no, actually, I, I, I played him because he was playing my younger son and getting the best of him, even though he's not a hooper. But he's just bigger and faster than my, my youngest son. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, I, I'll, I'll avenge your loss. I'll play. And man, don't you know I threw my back, on my back out from step wrong or something like that? Man. Oh yeah. man, yeah. So I'm 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 dealing with that as as well today, man. On top of the the dog stuff that was going on, like just hobbling around, like holding my back. I'm feeling like an old man. But let's talk more about like you being an athlete and and kind mm-hmm. of what things from you being an athlete has benefited your career as a, as a tech recruiter and as a as a career coach as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, one of the key things that, you know, I I think is number one, if I was telling, you know, when I talk to, you know, young men who are making that transition, young men and women, actually, who are making that transition from like college athletics to like the corporate world, I always tell them never lose your competitive edge. You know, I think um, Mm. I think college athletes and athletes in general and there's people who are non-athletes, too, but just speaking about, you know, athletes, we kind of had we had that competitive drive in us. Right. And I always tell, you know, individuals never lose that, you know, you can use that for for a good. Right. So, you know, uh-huh. never, never lose that competitive edge, never lose that drive. You know, right. you know, it's not necessarily like competing against your coworkers or anything like that. And sometimes it's healthy to do that. But a lot of times, you know, after you lead the ball game, it's competing with yourself. 
you know, competing against yesterday's version of yourself. Like, what can I do each and every day to get better? You know, what right. new skill can I learn, you know, this month? What new skill can I learn this quarter? You know, like, you know, even they say in basketball, like a basketball player, you get better in the off season. You don't get better during the season because during the season you playing games, you know, you on a, you on a plane, train, <laughs> automobile, you in the weight room, you in the classroom, you get better in yeah. the off season. So what it teaches you yeah. as well is discipline and, and self accountability, right? To make mm. sure that you're, you're always leveling up your skills. And I think that's one of the things that helped me move and elevate in my career and become such a, you know, respected and trusted voice in the industry is that I was always willing to learn new things. Um, because even in recruiting, things change, you know, employment yeah. laws change, how you attract talent changes. And if you're a tech recruiter, the technology changes every three years. Right. So you always have to yeah. be practicing and always have to, you know, keep learning new things. Um, also, yeah. you know, I've I've been on I've been on winning teams. Obviously, you know, you see the jersey and I think you might be able to see they give you a copy of the trophy right there. I don't know if you can see it. So, okay, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So I and I say all that to say not to brag, but I say I've been on winning teams, but also I've been on losing teams, and I've been mm -hmm. on winning teams where we went on losing, you know, losing streaks or had slumps. So one of the things that I learned about, you know, in, that I took into my career is, is being poised, always staying poised because you don't want to get too high in the high moments yeah. where you get too cocky and you get too full of yourself and you think you're invincible yeah. and, and undestructible. Mm -mm. There's going there's going to come a time where you're going to have to be in a valley a little bit and and not get too high in the highs, but also not get too low in the lows and kind of just mm -hmm. staying even kill, enjoying the victories and the wins when they come and celebrating those and celebrating yourself and your hard work. But there's going to be a valley, you know, but that's that's oh, life. Yeah. That's why they call, that's why it's a journey. It's called a journey because there's there's <laughs> ebbs and flows. Right. So being able to yeah. just be conscientious about what those things are and just staying poised um hard work what i think i talked about working smarter and not harder you know and 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 just knowing your craft i think those are the big things really that i learned being coachable being coachable this is one of the things i'm putting in my book um always always be coachable no matter how skilled you are no matter how experienced uh -huh. you are in something you always need some sort of coaching in some shape or way or form in your career you know even if you're like a like a high level, you know, back end developer, you know, you're always right. going to need coaching, you know, because things change or whatever industry that you're in, no matter how seasoned a professional you are, how skilled you are, you're going to need coaching at some point. So, so always remaining coachable, I think is key. Yeah. I think those are great points. Um, especially the off, I mean, I love that about the, the, the off season, you get better in the off season and, and the way to me, the way I look at it, how it translates in tech is, Y'all season is your downtime. Uh, I think because tech is so continuous as far as how technology evolves, you constantly have to be on that grind of of, of, of continuous learning. Uh, and it's harder to, of course, there's, you know, there's always, it, you know, during work, you have to do research, you have to, you know, figure things out. But a lot of times it's all about trying to figure out a solution while you're at work. Uh, and I've always found, at least in, within my career, that the way that I get better is, you know, not is during, you know, off hours, um, you know, an hour here or a couple hours here, 30 minutes here, like whatever mm -hmm. it is. It's like, you know, it's it's there's the discipline really to me lies in staying consistent uh, as opposed to how long, you know, you're, you're going to like study or something like that. Like I tell my, my, my son all the time, the one who plays basketball, I'm like, you know what? I was like, you, you may not be able to get two hours in or an hour in at the gym all the time, but go downstairs in the basement, set up some cones and do 15 minutes worth of dribbling. Mm -hmm. Like just around, yeah. a, just around the basement, just, just work on that for 15 minutes. And it, it, that's, mm -hmm. it's not a huge time suck or anything like that. And you'll be surprised if you do that consistently, how much better you're going to be than everybody else. Cause they may yeah. only do it once or twice at, at practice. Right. Yeah. So that's something that we, that, that I try to instill in them from a, from an athletic standpoint, but also from a, a tech standpoint, I was a team lead for a company, a uh, consulting company. And that's one of the things that I would, you know, whenever we met, when I, when I met with one of the team members, one of the things that I would tell them like, yeah, you know, you have this goal, you want to do this by this. I'm like, well, 
And they're like, yeah, I just don't know how much time I have. Like I do this. I'm like, well, just do 30 minutes of reading. Like it, mm -hmm. people think that you got to do four hours worth of reading or something. No, you half hour, hour. If you want to do an hour and a half, two hours, that's fine. A lot of times it, there's more negative effects to that than, than positive because you start losing concentration. Mm -hmm. You're not retaining the information or anything like that. So let's just do, mm -hmm. do a half an hour of focused, really focused reading. Or an hour go. of really focused, and it'll pay dividends because you're if you do it consistently. So I'm glad that you uh, that you brought that up and mentioned that because that's that's key not just in tech, but in careers as a whole, right? Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about about Raleigh Durham. Like, I mm -hmm. I remember re someone from that area reaching out. This was like years ago before we had a chapter. They wanted to start a chapter. And the first thing they said is, is they call it the triangle. Is it triangle park or research? Triangle park. Area? Yeah. Research yeah. triangle park. Right. Yeah. Uh, we got a few different names. And, I'll, I'll, I'll say it in okay. a second, but we got a few different names. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit, like if somebody decided like, Hey, I'm going to move to, I want to move to Raleigh. I want to, you know, for a career. And so like, what can they expect from the area? Yeah. So, um, you know, this is a conversation I always love to have because even, you know, as chapter president, I have these conversations a lot, but also as a tech recruiter, I have these conversations a lot with people who want to move, you know, relocate here to, to North Carolina. Right. I'm also um, on the board of advisors for NC Tech, North Carolina Technology Association. So I, I love this. Okay. But nice. Raleigh, Raleigh, Durham is like really the tale of two cities. Right. So they're, they're like basically right next to each other on the map. You know, so it mm -hmm. makes sense for us to have a, two cities in one chapter. It didn't make sense for us to have a Raleigh chapter and a Durham chapter. We just need to have one chapter because there's a tell of two cities, um, okay. you know, both rich in history. Um, the Research Triangle Park area is an area right between Raleigh and Durham that hosts all these different like um, science companies, biotech companies, tech companies. It's like acres. It's like literally mm -hmm. a park. And all these tech companies are just lined up in a row and they have like these these campuses here, like headquarters, like all in a row. And that's why they call it Research Triangle Park, because in North Carolina or in the Carolinas, that's where all the innovation happens. Right. So a lot of these tech companies are headquartered here or they have their second or third headquarters here. I give you an example. Okay. Amazon, uh, Amazon Web Services, their HQ1 or headquarters one is in Seattle, Washington. Their okay. HQ2 yeah. headquarters two is in the DMV area. But okay. they were actually looking to put their headquarters to here in Raleigh, Durham. But they decided to mm. I think they decided to, to move it to Arlington, Virginia for like tax reasons. But um, this is right. the center of innovation for the for the for North Carolina, the Carolinas period. Right. So right. basically, we have a lot of different industry here. Right. A lot of different industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of different, you know, different types of entrepreneurships that, that are happening here. Durham is one of the top places. Uh, for entrepreneurs, right? You know, the Google Startups has a whole program um, in Durham, North Carolina, um, oh, at, you nice. know, right there in the area. So you get a lot of like different variations of different types of people that that live here, right? A lot of the people that live in Raleigh, Durham aren't actually from Raleigh, Durham. They're from, we get a lot of people from New York. We get a lot of people from the Midwest and Chicago, Ohio. Um, mm -hmm. We get a lot of people from California, California um, is increasingly growing as far as, you know, the cost of living. So I yeah. had a conversation with a candidate not too long ago. I was like, well, why? Why North Carolina? You know, you know why? He was like, well, we have a Silicon Valley there. You guys have somewhat of a Silicon Valley in Raleigh, Durham. So the two translate. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, you have North Carolina or Raleigh, Durham has all these prestigious universities that are right yeah. around each other. You know, you got North Carolina yeah. State. You know, you yep. got UNC Chapel Hill, Duke University, um, yep. North Carolina Central University, HBCU, and not too far mm -hmm. away, you got North Carolina A&T. So like, I could come here yeah. and I can get advanced education, advanced degrees. Um, Wake County is one of the best public school systems in North Carolina, if not the best. I think it's like always number one and number two since I've been in school. Um, and another reason why this gentleman wanted to move from California to North Carolina is because you guys also have beaches and mountains on either side. So I always say Raleigh Durham is where you come to have life and have life more abundantly, per, you know, per se. Uh, so nice. that's what you'll experience here. Um, you know, it's a very active tech hub. A lot of times I don't think we get the shine we deserve um, because we're not like a big city. Um, we're mm. a nice size city. 
city. We're not a big city. We don't have the immaculate skylines like a New York or LA. And, you know, shout out to them. Love both cities, been to both of them. But I think sometimes right. we we get overlooked with with the flashiness. But tech right. lives in Raleigh Durham and we have an, an, an exciting, engaged member base at Blacks in Technology. They're very engaged, very they 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 just love this area and they're always looking for ways to network and do events and that's what we and that's what we do here as a chapter. That's excellent. That's excellent. It's good to hear all those, you know, wonderful exciting things about about the area. In case I might want to, you know, move from Ohio. One day. Yeah, one of it's always one of the. It's always one of the top ten places um to live. Um, it's always really? one of the top ten places nice. to live. Yeah, it's like we're on every list every year. Um, top places to live, top places for professionals. Um, uh, very diverse area. Um, you know, we're you know we're not you know DC or in Atlanta, but we have a black tech professional nucleus here. Uh, the cost of nice. living is relatively inexpensive. Um, and we're in a great area. We're right in the middle. If you, if you want to go to the DMV, the DMV is here. Atlanta's right here, Raleigh, Durham. And then our brothers and sisters down in Charlotte, they right, they right next to us. So it's a, it's a great area. The weather's nice and you know, it's just, it's thriving here. Very nice. Very cool. So speaking of, uh, I know you started talking a little bit about, you know, the, why, um, you know, the bit members and, and how, you know, the, the activity there at, at, at the chapter, how did you first hear about bit? Yeah. So, um, you know, in my tech recruiting career, you know, I was doing a lot of things with like, you know, diversity recruiting and coming up with creative ways to, uh, to attract mm-hmm. talent, you know, when I was working at the, you know, the big, the, you know, these big tech companies during that time, um, I was, you know, doing a lot of that, you know, as far as my career, but I was, I'm always thinking of ways like, what can I do? outside of my day-to-day work, you know, to kind of give mm-hmm. back, right? Um, I have a, you know, right. kind of a heart to serve and, and and lead and things like that. So I wanted to see if there was something maybe here locally. Um, you know, I'm a tech recruiter, so, I, you know, I checked out Nesby, um, but, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily an engineer, but I wanted to, like, where's, right. where's a organization or a, a somewhere I can go where I don't necessarily have to be a technologist but I can mm. still be part of the organization. Um, and right. you know, I fit the criteria to be a member of Blacks in Technology. Um, and I, you know, came across it, um, you know, had a, a conversation with the uh the president at the time who was actually, you know, still on the board and, you know, kind of shared my passion for wanting to be a part of it, just to really kind of have a, you know, sense of community and also find out how ways what I can do as a black tech recruiter, because there's not really many of us black tech recruiters. Like, right. well, here's a, how's, here's right. a way. How, what's what's a way I can give back to the members in the community here in the Raleigh Durham area and um, had a conversation with her. Um, and then she was like, well, have you thought about maybe, you know, having a, more of an expansive role? So I was like, what does it look like? Right. And, you know, a few weeks later, you know, had some conversations with, you know, some of the you know existing board members at the time. And, you know, I was on the board and and, you know, she thought that would be a great way for me to um, be in a in a position where there could you know be some exposure, some sort of elevated, um, you know, role where I'll be able to kind of charter those things. So that's how I found out about it. Just wanted to do more, you know, outside of my my career, you know, to kind of add a supplement to what I was doing. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'll say this, like, we're, we're happy to have someone like you in that position. I mean, Raleigh, the RDU chapter is, is consistently one of the most active uh, chapters and, and the, the, the events that you all put on uh, are always tops. Uh, and then you're, you're, you're always like, you know, making sure that everyone knows about what you all are doing. You're sharing pictures and things like that all the time. I'm, I'm constantly reposting your stuff on LinkedIn and, and everywhere. Yeah. So, um, excellent. Excellent. So let's, let's, let's do a little roll call. Let's, let's go down the names and the roles of the, the leaders of the, uh, the RDU chapter. Do you have a product or service that you would like to share with the BIT audience? Or maybe you'd like to support the BIT community and do your part in helping us with Stomping the Divide. Start by sponsoring one of our podcasts. Please email us at contact us at blacksintechnology.net. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, we, we have a lot. So I'm a... 
I'm, I'm definitely okay. gonna make sure I don't forget anybody. But um, we <laughs> have uh, T- Tanisha, who Tanisha Cruz, who is um, also yep. immediate past uh, chapter president, and she was also mm. one of the co-founders of the chapter um, some some years ago. Um, she is yeah. currently our VP of membership and engagement. Her role is really important. Um, because you know she comes up with all of these incredible ways to make sure our members stay engaged and also to recruit new members and she's really nice. the really the engine behind a lot of our events she's really good at curating events okay. um really thinking about the, the the member experience and the guest experience so um she's you know done a number of different things the melanin mixer that we had you know back in october she was really the the, the driving force behind that you know, I, all I really did was make up the flyer and come up with the name, but she was the one, she was the one that made that Friday night in October in downtown Durham magical. So, so hats off to, to Tanisha. Cool. Um, then there's LaShonda Rogers. Uh, she's our vice yep. president of community outreach. Uh, she is very instrumental in, you know, making sure that we have these community connections and these community ties in the Raleigh Durham area in a really, in a real way. Um, you know, she, you know, definitely connects us with, you know, you know, school system, um, also different, you know, nonprofit organizations as well that share the same mission as ours also. And they kind of help push us forward. Um, anything that you see us do, you know, with the school system, anything that you see us do um, from a government standpoint, she's really the the backbone behind that. So um, that that's nice. her role. Um, and then we have, you know, Barrett. Um, he's our vice president of finance. He's more, uh, you know, behind the scenes. Um, I have people on my team that are more, you know, front front of the scenes, you know, more, you know, right, extroverted. Yeah. But then I also have uh, people on my team who are more introverted, more behind the scenes, and they're just as valuable. And I, I wanted to mix it up that way. But he makes sure that, you know, we are uh, <laughs> as frugal as possible uh, <laughs> and, and making sure that, you know, we we keep our, our money where it needs to be, but also make sure we're putting our money towards the right things, our chapter funds. So, you know, shout out to, uh, nice. to Barrett. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, Robin, uh, who is our one of our newer uh, members. She's the VP okay. of uh, administration. Um, she she came from the Charlotte chapter, um, and uh, okay. I know the Charlotte chapter. Um, they were an award winning um, chapter um, earlier yeah. on. Um, once I found out she was, you know, moving to Raleigh Durham, I'm like, really? <laughs> like, let's just talk. Let's, so uh, yeah, so I I, I talked to uh, you know the the former president Natasha. She she vouched for one hundred percent. Talked to some other people there. That was like, yeah, we love Robin. She'd be an incredible asset to uh, your team. She's very big because um, she does a lot of stuff, administrative stuff for us behind the scenes. She's really good with data analysis. Um, what we find is that a lot of companies that we work with, they want to know about the demographics of our chapter and what that looks like. So um, she's been very mm. instrumental in us kind of having a like putting together data and information that we can present to potential sponsors who want to know a little bit more detail, not only about our national or global membership, but our RDU membership. So uh, she's real big in right. that. Uh, Brentley, Brentley Wright, he is one of our newer members. He is our vice president of DEI initiatives. Um, I, you okay. know, He's a personal friend of mine. I call him like the DEI evangelist in our in our, our leadership group. Um, he um, he works at the diversity movement. Um, this is really part of his work, um, so mm-hmm. it kind of really coincides to what we do. Um, when once we you know strategized at the beginning of the year, I realized that you know as we talked about before, DEI was like under attack, and we yeah. thought it'll be great to have somebody on our leadership team. Um, that we can bring into our events when we're working with corporations to really talk about DEI in a real honest, passionate way. Um, so um, I, I wanted to I handpick him specifically for that. Um, so and and he definitely fills that gap for us. Uh, Norris is our vice president of university engagement. Norris is the uh, the life of the party on the uh, on the chapter uh, team. So he. He makes everybody laugh. Um, he keeps, you know, everybody's spirits high and things like that. Uh, he's real passionate about, um, you know, students. Um, he's an HBCU yeah. alum. He went to North Carolina Central University just right here in Raleigh, Durham. Um, but so he's very involved with HBCUs, very passionate about that. But we don't want to forget about our young brothers and sisters at the PWIs too, right? At the NC States, yeah. at the Dukes and the Carolinas. So he's doing great right. work right now and making sure we reach out to those um, you know, young, you know, brothers and sisters as well who might not necessarily be at the HBCU, but you know, they're black and wanting to get into tech and we want to make sure they have a place of belonging. So he he leads that effort. 
uh, Nicole Hargrove. Uh, she's our Vice President of Technical Education and Learning. She has dedicated her whole career to creating pathways for minorities to um, learn about technology and setting kind of learning pathways for them. Um, I thought it would be incredible for her to be on our board. Um, when we go to these meetings, um, when we, no, no, not necessarily when we go to these meetings, but we have these are our events, right? Um, I right. get a lot of questions about like, hey, like what certification do you recommend this and that? And like I said, I'm a, I can talk about technology conversationally as a tech recruiter, but mm -hmm. we needed somebody that was going to dive deep. And Nicole is right. that person that can dive deep with people, right? So we got, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of different plans that we're going to do with her about really, you know, in a, in a formal and informal way of educating our members about, you know, educational pathways they, they can take and also aligning that with the offerings that we already have. So, um, and then we have nice. our board members. Um, we have Eric, uh, DJ, uh, and Rosa. They play big roles for us um, because these are all um, co-founders. They were with the chapter okay. at the very beginning, right? Their voice mm. as as board members and also co-founders is very instrumental because they keep everybody honest, right? Because they were here from the beginning. They make sure that, right. you know, um, we stay on the same, we stay on that mission, stay on that path. So their their knowledge and their wisdom is very important as we, you know, our decision making processes and how we plan our year. Um, and we also have um, Andrea. Um, she is um, the um, lead, um, the Black ERG lead at Cisco. Um, so strategically, we wanted to nice. bring her in um, and she does a lot of things. You know, she's working on a lot of, you know, cool and interesting products, projects with us, like our newsletter. Um, we started a, a, a member spotlight. Um, so, you know, she's working through those things and really kind of, you know, spearheading those initiatives. And then we got Gary, um, who's on one of our newest uh, members as well. Um, he has a military technical background. So we thought that would okay. be great also to kind of bring that in as well, because we don't want those brothers and sisters to be forgotten too. Yeah, and he has yeah, that no experience doubt. because he is serving. Um, he uses technology. Mm. He is a technologist. Right. And I know we got, we got, you know, brothers and sisters down in Fayetteville, down in Fort Bragg that, you know, we can reach out to. So um, that's, that's the board. Uh, Raleigh Durham, we got a large team. Um, I will say, you know, we, I have a really great team. Um, I think we had founders like that, yeah, we had founders and people that came before me that really kind of set the foundation, you know, for right. me to come in with all my new ideas and flyers and, and, um, Hey, let's do this. <laughs> hey, let's do that. You know, let's go, yeah. let's go over here to SAS. Let's go over here. Like, you know, they set a foundation for me to really come in and build. So I always want to pay homage to them because, um, they, they did a credible job, you know, in the earlier years, really setting that found foundation and that framework for framework for me to come in and with all these um interesting great and illustrious ideas so yeah shout out to them yeah definitely shout out to them I, man, like you all you all could write a a, a chapter blueprint book but just about <laughs> the way you all operate no seriously like yeah and, and it, this is this is no knock on on any of the other chapters i know you know specific chapters don't have the, the resources uh uh, whether it's, you know, um, or or even they may be new to the operation side of running a chapter as a whole. And it's, it's, it's not an easy, you know, kind of, oh, I'm going to spend 15 minutes on this and for the week. And like, you, there's time that, that you have to invest in, um, in getting things up and running, reaching out to different uh, corporations, organizing events, reaching out to possible potential speakers, you know, getting mm -hmm. members or the community involved. Like there's a lot of stuff. Um, and you all have really created a good blueprint as not from, from a personnel standpoint, uh, but also the different roles because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, I would say, you know, in, in, in some chapters, there's like one or two people and they're taking on the roles of all that. Right. And it's, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And if you can, yeah. if you can have more people in those roles, to, then that, that allows you to be able to kind of concentrate on, on, on what your specialty is and then bring all that together in a, in a probably a more polished uh, product, so to speak. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate you, you know, mentioning that. And, you know, that was something that, you know, when I came into, you know, this year, you know, I was like, okay, I wanted to, 
you know, my first year as president, you know, um, last year, I really like wanted to take a year to kind of really assess things. And, and like, I was like, okay, we need to make some uh, like some minor, small recalibrations here. But then I had the worth all mm-hmm. enough and awareness enough. Okay. We need to bring in new members. Right. So I had to propose a whole, you know, kind of new structure and system to the team, which, you know, they bought in. Right. right? So, you know, like even as mm-hmm. president, I still had to get, you know, the, not necessarily the permission, but their buy-in, right? Because it's, right. it's a team effort, right? And then had to go and right. get Brentley and get Andrea and all these other people as well. Um, so the structure that you see is, you know, just as a leader and as a president, really sitting back, looking at, okay, let's let's fine tune this, let's fine tune this, and then let's add these four pieces to the wheel so we can keep, you know, keep the ball rolling. And you know, I, but yeah, it's. I think everybody does an incredible job. We delegate. It's a team effort. Um, I don't really get caught in the weeds a lot as a president. I, you know, they start initiatives. They have their own projects and things that they work on, and I just go at it. You know, like and and I just let yeah. them let them do it. So it's it's really a team effort because, as you mentioned, you know, I can't have my hands on everything. You will get burnt out like yeah. that real quick, right? So you definitely yeah. want to build a team. Find out what people are good at empower them to do it give them a role get you know give them some goals and uh, really you know f- create roles that from an organizational standpoint make sense and let people do their thing and 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 watch everybody kind of grow and flourish so so i appreciate you saying that yeah and and man your leadership skills just from that segment alone it lets me know that you're the right person to be doing this because you you're 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 the type of person just you know hearing you speak right now that um you're 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 not micromanaging you're you're allowing people to do what they do best and bring that all together uh into something that it will make the team stronger uh and you're more of that that servant leader like hey like I'm I'm here to support what you want to do yeah I have ideas I'm going to run it past you all see how that how that pans out bring all of your other ideas together the things that you're good at and the things you know and I'm and I'm going to be hands off you know with with, mm-hmm. with certain things let you all do yeah. that and empower empower you all to do it and it that makes for a more healthy environment uh, as yeah. a whole, anyhow, right? When when you're like yeah. that, so absolutely, I just stuff, let them cook. Stuff. I don't I don't got to be all in the yeah. kitchen and all in the pot. Just let them cook, <laughs> and they and and they everybody they they do incredible stuff. Like, I'm like, okay, great. So right, yeah, right. It's easy when it's like that, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely easy. So tell us a little bit about um, the LinkedIn, the Black Creators on LinkedIn, man. Like from your bio, you were recently named to the Power Fifties uh, top Black Creators on LinkedIn. So tell us a little bit about what that entails. Yeah, so um, it la- it was you know last year in 2023, you know I really um, you know wanted to make it a point of not being a recruiter that only posted just jobs. You know th- those things are important, right? Mm. But I really wanted to find ways yeah. to you know give tidbits of perspective, advice, wisdom, you know, to an audience that I believed it could benefit, right? Um, so Mm. it was really just like, you know, posting little nuggets of wisdom. I did a thing last year called free game Fridays. I was just giving people, you know, interview tips, resume advice, but I also tried to make it engaging. I didn't want it to be plain and and ordinary. I wanted to make it so people could, you know, resonate with what I was saying, but also they could take something practical and, and use it. Um, I've been on a number of different podcasts, um, in the industry, so, when you know the hosts send me things, I I post it on you know uh, LinkedIn, you know, and hopefully it helps some people. So I, I did a I went on a whole podcast tour last year, um, did <laughs> nice. that had, you know spoke spoke at some conferences, you know, some snippets came back. I, I posted it on there, you know, so people would know I was speaking. I was always on podcasts, but also I used to handpick right. stuff like, okay, let me use my discernment. What is the people? What are the people saying? What do they need to hear? They need to hear this. So I will put it out there and without even knowing or not even looking for any accolades or awards or any self aggrandizement, I got um, a message saying, you know, from a, a, a pretty well-known content creator um, in this space uh, saying, hey, congratulations, you've been named to the power 50 and you've been voted on by your peers in the industry. So I was very, very excited and very honored to, to, to be that. That wasn't what I was going for, but 
you know, yeah. I'm out, you know, I'll receive it. And uh, I think it meant a lot to me because, you know, when you're, when you're voted into something on a list or a top list, or you get an award or some recognition and it comes from your peers, I mean, that, that's, yeah. that's a, that's a real big, you know, stamp of approval because they're doing the work that you're doing and they see exactly. you as somebody that they respect. So yeah, I really, really, you know, appreciated that honor. We'll see if I'm, you know, named to the list again in 2024. So well, well, good luck with that, man. That's that's definitely uh, yeah. something to be proud of for sure. Um, tell us a little bit about the book you're 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 writing. Yeah, so um, I, I'm a I'm a first time author. Um, you know, I'm, I'm writing a book. Um, I'm in the process as we speak. I started writing the book back in uh, October of last year, and uh, this was actually a, a, a presentation that I did at a, a couple of tech conferences last year, and um, it, it got rave reviews like you know people I, you know multitude of people were talking to me after you know i spoke and you know people were just in my dms and inbox like, hey man can you expound on this can you tell me more about this and the presentation i did you know you know when you go and speak at these conferences you got to give your your you know what do you want to do what are you going to write about your deck and it was right cra- cracking the code 10 possible reasons you didn't get the job that was that was the presentation and um i had you know i had some slides went through it and um, like I said, people loved it. And I was like, how can I expound upon this? Because people wanted more. And I right. was like, well, I think, I'm, I think I might turn this into a book. So mm. basically, that's the name of the book. Um, it's called Cracking the Code, 10 Possible Reasons You Didn't Get the Job. Um, it's, very, it's very candid. I'm honest, truthful. Um, what it is, is that it talks about some of the common pitfalls that job seekers face um, when they're looking for a role. But one thing it does also do as well, it, there are reasons on here, and I wanted the audience to know this, and I'm working through this now, that sometimes these reasons why you didn't get an opportunity has nothing to do with you. There are certain in- indicators and environmental factors that are happening in the job market right now that have nothing to do with you, right? So there's going to be a level of, account- of accountability on the corporate side and from uh, to mm-hmm. my fellow recruiters in the game. But it's also going to really be telling people why. I don't think we tell people as career coaches and tech recruiters, we tell people what to do, but we don't tell them why they need to do what they need to do. So this yeah. is 15 years, 16 years of experience that I've had talking to people at multiple levels across various industries. And mm-hmm. I want to give the people why. Right. So um, there's going to be data in there, studies that I'm going to reference that are going to support my professional recommendations and and theories and notions. Um, It's going to be somewhat autobiographical, too, because I'm going to pull from instances as a tech recruiter, but I'm also going to pull from instances as a job seeker as well, because we've all been job seekers at one point. Um, So there's there's a mixture of reasons to have more something more to do with the job seeker. But there are reasons in there in the book that have something to do with what's going on in the world and 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 you know i think i'll I'll give you an example there's one chapter that's going to be talking about a tight job market that has nothing to do with you as as a as a candidate that's just the you know the factors around we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about these layoffs why the layoffs are happening um there's a lot of misinformation going out there by people that are speaking about layoffs and it's just not that's not why people are getting laid off so people are going to know the truth People are going to know why these things are happening. Um, we're going to talk about unconscious bias and bias in general in the selection process and broken recruiting practices. So it's going to hold people on the other side of the table, my peers, accountable as well. And if it don't apply to you, then let it fly. But um, <laughs> right. but the book is coming. I had a cover reveal um, about a month or two ago. And I'm okay. using a publisher, yeah. And um, it's good. We're looking at a summer 2024 uh, release date. Man, that's that's huge, man. That's uh, congrats on that, man. That's gonna be that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. Yeah, and and, and when it comes out, definitely let me know because uh, I definitely yeah. love to promote it. Um, just from the stamp, I mean, of you know, you're 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 part of the the bit organization, but just being part of the community, like that's something that um, that that I like to do as well. It's like when I, when I see that someone is doing other things that it doesn't necessarily have to do with the organization itself. And they're doing some other Mm -hmm. things to help like the community. I love to, 
to spotlight that type of stuff, right? So when it comes out, man, let me know and, and we'll we'll do a, a a feature on that for sure. Yeah, we'll do. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll definitely, yeah, I'll definitely keep you posted for sure. Okay. The Bit Foundation has established featured partnerships and programs with companies such as Amazon, AT and T, CompTIA, TechStars, and more to provide our members with the resources we want and need to thrive and succeed in this tech ecosystem. To learn more, visit foundation.blacksandtechnology.net. Join now, and remember, membership is free. Okay, so a couple more questions before we get out of here. So what do you enjoy most about being the chapter president of BitRDU? Like, what are some of, like, some of the things that you're just like, man, I, this is this is amazing. This is why I do this. You know, I, I'll say, you know, just the really the response from our members and the just the mm-hmm. Black tech community in Raleigh-Durham as a whole, like... You know, we put on a lot of events, but you know, I'm 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 the chapter president. You know, I'm like a somewhat of a micro influencer in the industry. I'm a you know top voice, but it's not really about me. It's really about the members. Like I said, I grew up here. You know, I'm I've you know I, I've, I've seen Raleigh Durham grow and develop into this tech hub. And one of the key things, you know, even you know being a black professional in general and just being highly networked here. You know, we give people when we do these events, we give people a place to belong, right? That's what they want. Right. They want a place to belong. They want a place where yeah. they feel safe, and not necessarily. I'm not talking about safe physically from danger, but just, you know, just safe. Like I'm home, right? Yeah. And um, we also do a lot of work to make sure when we partner with these companies that there's some sort of talent acquisition pathway. Um, and these are the things our members want. And when I go to an event, like sometimes I just kind of sit back and watch and just like. You know, we, we're doing a good thing here, you know, and I, I just love to see the smile on people's faces. I love to see people making making connections with other members and other people, people that are non-members that come and yeah. seeing friendships formed at a BIT Raleigh Durham event, yeah. you know, and, you know, it was a we had the diversity tech connect mixer here in uh, Durham not too long ago, which was very successful. Yeah. And it was this group of girls over there talking and they like hanging out now outside of bit stuff, yeah. you know, and they talking about like their careers and, you know, I do this, I do that. Have you experienced that? So it's a, it, it's just having that place where people can make connections and, and get real information from each other. You know, like as leaders, they may not always get the, you know, get the information from us, but we have smart, bright, intelligent members who know a thing or two as well. So we right. don't always have to be as leaders, the source. You know, yeah. um, they can be the source for each other and to, to be yeah. able to curate that and put that those people in a room where we can find a topic that they care about and get trusted people to talk about that, create a talent acquisition pathway. But then at the same time, having them have that place of that, that, that pocket of affirmation. That's what I love most about it. You know, it, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's what it is for me. It's always for me. It's always about the members and it's always about the community I grew up in. So that's what it, that's why I love. Yeah, about. I, yeah. I, I have to say, um, Bitcoin is is always like the pinnacle of the year when it comes to um, like just happiness and 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 because you you know you you go to Bitcoin and you see all these different uh, relationships being formed and just you know, friendships being formed and not only that, like you said, man, like there's there's something very powerful. Um, about people engaging with one another in a, in a way uh, that they're not able to, like maybe in their workspace, like they're, they, they see another black person in tech and their eyes light up and it's just like, Oh wow. Like I can go and talk to you about tech, but I can also talk to you about hair problems. Right. Like mm-hmm. there's, there's, yep. there's a, a specific, um, Think like there's there's this cultural part of of that 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 like you said like that safe space and it doesn't necessarily mean safe from physical harm but that just I, I, one of my friends and I think this is kind of like the, a premier example smart dude he's he's out of Austin uh, Texas software engineer one of the smartest people I've ever run run into um, and he he was part of Bit like way back in 
the early 2000s, like when I first started Bit. Uh, and I got to know him through Bit. And I ended up going to South by Southwest in Austin one year and actually stayed at his house. Um, Mm -hmm. And he said, like, it's not about the tech part. He said, because I can go to any conference and talk about tech, right? Like, I can Mm -hmm. talk tech with anybody. It's, hey, can I talk to you about tech and then pivot from that and talk to you about Wu-Tang? And I was just like, Mm -hmm. wow, yeah, you're right. Like those types mm-hmm. of conversations. I'm not saying that white people don't listen to Wu Tang. That's not what I'm tra- trying to say. <laughs> I'm saying that commonality, that cultural piece that 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 we have, is huge from a from a you know a safe mental space, right? Uh, just being mm-hmm. able to talk about that period, like out of the blue, like it might not have anything to do with anything. Yo, you see, you listen to that new so and so album? Yeah, I did. Yeah. What do you think yeah. about? It? Oh man, that's dope. It's I, I like I like this, like those conversations, and it, not necessarily about music, but it could be about other things. Might not happen at, at any of these other mm-hmm. you know type of conferences. Uh, so yeah. that level right there is 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 powerful, and I like seeing that because I've seen even I've seen it at Bitcoin, um, like you know we did the 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 step show, but even outside of that, there were like. There was like this segment that, uh, that's um, it's captured on video where uh, these people these are dancing to Beyonce, mm-hmm. right? Like, okay, when, when are you going to see that? When are, when are you going to go to another tech conference and see a group of young men and women out there excited about tech, excited about being, but in, in dancing to Beyonce, like loving, mm-hmm. like that 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 camaraderie, that fellowship that you feel right there, like that's. That's what I love to see. Yeah, that's one hundred percent. And and I'll be if I could say one more thing, I'd be remiss to, like if I don't yeah, say yeah. this as well. We like our chapter. Um, we we help black owned businesses in the area too because we have such a mm. huge member base. I think we're over like I think last time I checked, we were like seven hundred and thirty one. Um, I know there's like chapters that are larger, but that's that's a pretty sizable for Raleigh Durham. Yeah, and so we use our platform to make sure that we support black owned businesses. Right. Like even like the ice cream social for the culture, like, you know, she's always supported our chapter. And then when she was going through trouble, she called upon us. And sometimes Mm -hmm. when, you know, if if something's going wrong in Raleigh Durham, sometimes God will send a a chapter like RDU to come help solve a problem, you know? And that's what, that's what we do. Um, A lot of like, even our, we have a photographer that we use, um, was a friend of mine. He's an entrepreneur and he's done photography for about three or four of our events. Mm. And from our events, he's gotten so much business. Brother, he, yeah. the first time, the first time he did, did something for us was the melanin mixer. Mm. Um, I wanted him for the SAS event, but he wasn't available. Um, but if we ever run it back with SAS again, I'm like, yo, you got to use my guy Rio. So yeah. he did the melanin mixer. Man, he 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 was washing my car here because he has a car detailing service. He was like, dude, I don't know what you do, man, but I see you all the time. Like, what do you do? He's like, yeah, I do this. He's like, hey, man, I do photography. I saw y'all be having events. He's like, man, y'all ain't even got to pay me. I'll come do it for free. I was like, you sure? Because we because we want to support you. He was like, no, nah, bro, yeah, let, yeah. let me just come show you what I can do. He came to the Melanin Mixer, man. Those photos that you see, man, that was all, that was all him. And nice. from that event, he's been booked and busy ever since October. That's nice. Ever since. That's what's up. Members use his services. Other companies use his services. The company that was hosting it, Avalar, they, they called him for an event, a corporate event. He's been booked and busy ever since. So in wow. and this and the last two events, we made sure he got paid. Um, he yeah, just yeah. all the photos from the Diversity Tech Connect mix, those were all his photos. The video uh-huh. recap. And every time I talk to him, man, I'm booked, man. I'm booked for the next three weeks, man. If y'all got another event, you gotta let me know. And all the black owned <laughs> right. businesses, like they they've gotten new business because of us highlighting them and people coming to our events. Oh, I've never been to Burrito Soul. Oh, wow. I'm going to bring me me and my girlfriend going to come back here next week. So right. that's I wanted to make that a point as well because that's another thing that I love to see. And I think that's another thing that we all on our leadership team love to see. Yeah. You know, um, that we support we support the Black-owned businesses here in the Raleigh Durham area. Every event for us is not going to be a tech event. Sometimes right. it's just going to be a community event. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's just going to be a gathering of like like minds. 
That's that's what it's yeah. going to be. And I think that's what people love about us is that I don't have to be in tech to come to an event. We let we tell Nesby, hey, Nesby is like our cousins. We tell them to pull up, come through, yeah. come through. National Black NBA, Latinas in tech, North Carolina, they are new friends. We tell people to come. We want to be a beacon in the community, you know, and then nice. somebody who's not in tech, an event they come to may inspire them to get in tech. And there you go. You got a new member, you know, so that's that's what we yeah. do. Not to be too long winded, but I had to say that. No, no, hey, no, I love it. I love it, man. I, and I, I love you touching on having other organizations be a part of the festivities or the events as well. That's one thing that I, I, I wish there was more of. Um, in general, uh, I, I think there, I think it's getting better, but I, I would like to see it get much better. And I say that because. With this, like the Cincinnati chapter, we 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 just co-hosted an event with um with a uh, road pitch, a uh, young mm-hmm. lady who's actually here. She's been going to different various different cities and having like this traveling like uh, pitch competition. Um, mm-hmm. and one of the things that you know I kind of spoke a little bit, but one of the things that you know I said was like this is this is something that we need to do more of, like this level of support for one another. Because this DEI, this attack on DEI is real. I, I just read a, a, a an article today uh, that talked about how they were about to try to use like civil rights era laws mm-hmm. uh, to go against what they consider anti-white racism, mm-hmm. right? And I was just like, yeah. it's 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 at a point that I haven't seen it before. And I don't know mm-hmm. if it's because it's like social media and all that stuff being, but it's still like at a fever pitch right now that th- this attack, like over the past couple of years, they've, they've taken words like woke and, and made them into something negative. They made DEI into something negative, anti-black race. Like they made that into negative. Now it's anti-white, like all this stuff, like to attack. So I think it's important for, for, for organizations like ours to support one another, you know, the NASBs, the, the BDPAs, the, the efforts, like I, I really do. And, and mm-hmm. it's been hard over the, the, over the years to, to do that. Um, but I would like to definitely see more of it. So it's good to hear that RDU is, is, is doing that and, and, and kind of and ma- making sure that you all maintain those, uh, those tight relationships with those organizations. Um, before we get out of here, let's, let's talk about like, what's next for, you and let's talk about what's next for RDU. Like, what are some of the things you all are putting together uh, for the spring and the summer that you that you feel people should know about? Yeah, for for sure. Um, I, you know, for me, I'll spend a short amount of time on me, and I'll spend most of my time on the chapter. Um, okay. you know, we just mentioned the book, so I'm I'm writing that. I got a deadline coming up, so um, you know, that's very exciting. Being a first time author, getting ready to get, you know just experiencing all the things that you didn't know when into authoring a book. Um, so that's next yeah. for me. Um, speaking at dreaming in color, um, in, uh, in, in new Orleans, um, in June. Um, and I think we're actually nice. in the process of, of myself and also some other bit leaders forming a partnership with them as well. Um, you know, for, for, our, cool. for our, our entire national member base. Um, and, nice. you know, just, you know, continuing to forge away at my, you know, my talent acquisition career and continue to grow. Um, but for the chapter, yep. Um, you know, we got a lot of exciting things coming up. MetLife has expressed, you know, immense amount of interest in being a, a chapter sponsor. And I think I talked to one of my VPs today, uh, Tanisha. I think she said um, that they confirmed. So she's been really vital in spearheading oh, nice. and, and and cultivating that relationship with MetLife here locally. They got a big campus, just like probably 20 minutes from me. Um, they've expressed okay. interest in doing three events with us. Um, so I'm really excited about that. That's what's coming up for us. Um, I know um, we we have we, our calendar our program calendar is pretty much already booked up. Um, we you know we're going to oh, do wow. an event with Cisco. Um, like I said, three with MetLife. Um, I think we got an event with uh, UBS, also known as Credit Suisse, coming up. Um, you know, starting to plan with that. Um, I know uh, Lashonda. She just forged a relationship with Durham Tech Community College, so we got some things coming up with that. Um, just a, a, a litany uh, uh, of things. Um, you know, I, you know, just it's just so much going on. Uh, but those are yeah. the key things. The MetLife um, chapter sponsorship is going to be huge for us. Um, you know, Lenovo, they're 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 going to do some stuff with us as well. You know, Durham Tech. You know, what, what Lashonda was able to forge for us. 
um nice. cisco i think we're going to do something later on um yeah got a lot and i'm probably forgetting something because we we're doing a lot of incredible things but um you know but yeah that's that's really what's it for the chapter i'm really proud of the chapter i'm really proud of this um this kind of community and nucleus that we've that we forged and thank you for your vision and starting all yeah. of this you know none of this none of this appreciate it man None of this, none of this happens if you don't have that vision and, and that passion to start all of this. So appreciate you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's funny, man. Um, I've always done audio podcasts. I've done like some, some video here and there. One of the things that one of the reasons, and this is not me. Like I don't, I don't have an ego. Like I, I feel like I'm the same old Greg I was from you know before I started Bit. I know that, you know, it's, it's, it's different now, uh, the, you know, the way, but at the same time, like, I don't want people to, um, there's, I, I just, I feel like I'm a, I'm like a servant leader. Like, I don't, I don't need the accolades. I don't need the, you know, the spotlight and everything like that. But, um, uh, someone was telling me that they feel like, like it's important that you show your face, right? It's important that people see you, um, mm-hmm. because I, I go to like Bitcoin like, and this happens every year. I'm walking around. People don't have an idea of who I am. Right. And I'll just, which yeah. is cool. Cause I like being able to just sit down with people and get like their true out there. Not saying that people are fake around me. I'm not saying, but I'm saying like people might change, you know, they might change up depending on, you know, who you are or whatever. So I'll go and I'll talk to people and they'll be like, yeah. So, you know, what brings you to Bitcoin? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm the founder. Oh yeah. The founder of what? Like a bit. And they're just like, Really? Uh, yeah, I am. And they're just like, I would, you know, I've had a number of people, I, w- I would have had no idea. Like, you're just walking around here like you, like you're just a regular person. Yeah. I'm like, I, I am a regular person. Like, that's how, that's how I am. Yeah. But, you know, doing a video podcast is, is, is more so for, you know, like, I just, I, I would like for people to, 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 to recognize me a little bit more. Uh, and just to put a, a face to the name, so to speak, right? It's not, you know, I don't, I don't need, you know, news cameras around me and, Hey, you've done this, you've done that. Like, I, that's, that's really not me, mm-hmm. but I like the visual aspect of what, of, of, of this and not just the voices so that other people in our community can see this conversation, see two black men talking, you know, and mm-hmm. as I'm interviewing more and more chapter leaders, see a black man and a black woman talking about the tech industry, about community uh, about all those things and, and, and can see themselves in, in us. And I think that's important. So, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Like, especially in our, in our community, um, in our culture, images matter, but most importantly, positive images yeah. matter. And a lot of our exactly. young brothers and sisters coming up, they, they need to see positive black men, positive black women. And not only, like you said, not only hear their voice, but see them. So yes they can see the, the us in themselves and vice versa. Right. Exactly. Cause I think, yeah, I 100% think like the imagery is 100% important. So I, I loved it. Yeah. Well, Bobby, this was fun, man. I'm really excited that uh, you were the first person uh, that I interviewed coming back to the podcast. Cause like I said, it's been, man, it might, it, it's been months since I did a podcast uh, and this being like the first video bit tech talk podcast. I'm, you know, I'm glad that you were the first person I interviewed Really excited about what Bit RDU is doing. Really excited about you being the leader there. Hope to see you at BitCon. Are you are you coming to BitCon? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we yeah, sure? I'm okay. definitely gonna be at BitCon. Yeah, yeah, we um yeah okay yeah we we definitely go we definitely gonna pull up. <laughs> it's gonna be in Atlanta this year. Okay. We definitely coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna yeah. be exciting, man. So, so yeah. yeah, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate everything that you all are doing. All the you know uh, RDU leadership. Uh, and let me know about that book when it comes out. Hit me up. I'm going to put it everywhere. I'm going to promote it. You know, uh, so just just let me know, man. Yeah. Appreciate you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you, man. I definitely appreciate having you. Take care. All right. Thank you, everyone, for checking out this episode of the Bit Tech Talk podcast. If you liked and saw what you heard, smash that like button and subscribe to our channel and stay in tune with us for our next episode. Until then, keep stomping the divide.